Good afternoon, I'm Milton Walker with the Midday News. A special welcome if you are watching on OneSpotMedia.com. One man is in custody following a double murder in Moko Clarendon this morning. TVJ News understands that about midnight, gunmen shot a couple through a broken window, killing them in their sleep. They have been identified as Javon Alexander Cole, otherwise called Alex, and Natalie Campbell. A relative of Miss Campbell spoke to our news team. I feel, feel, feel nervous, man. I tell you the truth. I feel nervous. Mm -hmm. That's all I can tell you. I feel nervous. I don't want blood, you know? Mm. Badly, man. Badly. You know? Nice girl, you know? Nice young woman. I think she's me, I um, tell you. I don't know what mood she now. Um, well, me was at my home. Me, me, nobody in a sleep at that time, and me hear the gunshot. So I come over, you know. Discover them come and shoot the fella and, and the young woman inside of the room there. This latest double murder brings to 81 the number of people that have been killed in Clarendon since the start of the year. Meanwhile, in Dunkirk in Kingston last night, four persons were shot too fatally during an attack by gunmen. It's understood that shortly after 8 o'clock, the men were outside a barber shop on Maiden Street when a white car drove up. The passengers opened fire on them. Kemar Price, a forklift operator from Wild Street, and 32-year-old Twain Simmons, known as Bobby, from Maiden Street, were killed. Price received gunshot wounds to his chest. Simmons received gunshot wounds to his head and neck. Nelson received gunshot wounds to the right side of his face. Shirley received gunshot wounds to his neck, sorry, to his back, left and right bottom. They were all taken to the Kingston Public Hospital by passers-by where Simmons was pronounced dead and 7.59. The Wilson was treated and released while Shirley was admitted in a stable condition. The scene was processed in 89mm spent shell casings, a warhead and three damaged bullets were retrieved. Head of the National Integrity Action, NIA Trevor Monroe, is appealing to stakeholders in Manchester to reclaim their parish before it gets too late. According to the latest police statistics, as at July 14, murders in Manchester have doubled when compared to 12 murders up to July last year. Manchester is the second most peaceful parish. You are at 14. That's three times better off than Jamaica as a whole when it comes to preserving the people of this parish against murder and homicide. You need to guard that. You're a leader in it, guard it. Help your police officers, your neighborhood watch. Make sure that you keep that leadership. A stern warning this afternoon from local government minister Desmond McKenzie that indiscipline will not be tolerated from young people who are employed to the Youth Summer Employment Program, YSEP. He made a comment at the launch of the program yesterday at the Montego Bay Convention Center. Mr. McKenzie says over the years he has been receiving complaints from a number of entities which have partnered with the local government ministry in providing summer employment. And I urge you not to allow this group to be the group that give the program bad marks. I will not be afraid to stop the program in the middle of the race. He says youth summer program is critical as it was through it that the government was able to conduct an audit on streetlights which gave them leverage in dealing with the Jamaica that Public Service Company last year. Assisted the local authorities to realize that over 35% of the streetlights across the country was not working. 
Mr. McKenzie indicated that of the over 3,000 applicants this year, 250 persons will be employed following the completion of the six-week program. A junior minister is blasting persons who are casting doubt on the unemployment data released by Statin. Speaking at the launch of the Youth Summer Employment Program yesterday, State Minister in the Education and Youth Ministry, Alonda Tarlong, lashed out against the critics. So to all the Jamaicans who believe that it is somehow shameful to work in a call center or it is somehow shameful to get six weeks employment at a youth summer program, you are bad for Jamaica. You are bad for Jamaica because you fail to see the good that this government is doing. You are bad for Jamaica. Mr. Terlong says the business process outsourcing sector has done a great deal in helping to boost the economy of the country in providing thousands of jobs. He gave this warning. Stop knocking honest living. When you knock honest living, you force our young men and you force our young women into a life of crime, violence and perpetual poverty. Stop it. Jamaica is moving in the right direction. You, the young people, are moving in the right direction by getting gainful employment. We take a break now. Stay with us. More stories after these messages. Welcome back. Continuing the news. Mayor of Portmore, Leon Thomas, is appealing for help from residents in the Sunshine City to reduce the widespread vandalism of the community notice boards. The appeal comes as several notice boards across the municipality have been destroyed. At the old street in Greater Portmore, uh, the entrance board that was constructed, the people have destroyed the lettering on the board. Bad man. And that costs a whole lot of money. Bridgeport. Bridgeport. It's true then it's You can have a bad line. Bridgeport also. I get to understand that there was a, a set of white people who visited El Shop and was taking picture at the community notice board that they climb up on top of the board. And break off some of the, the, the lettering off the board. Mayor Thomas explains that it cost over $100,000 to erect one of the community notice boards, hence the appeal. And I'm taking this opportunity yes. to say to the citizens of Portmore that they must take full control yes. of those community notice boards yes. that we are putting, because the parking I am top, that we place right across the municipality. We cannot spend so much money to erect these beautiful community boards and people are destroying them. Gasoline retailers are expressing concern regarding the increase in fuel prices in recent weeks. The JGRA says it's causing trouble for its members as consumers have started to cut back on the amount of gasoline they purchase. Petrol prices have increased by $11 over the past four weeks and are now at a two-month high. This represents a 15% increase since the start of the year. President of the Jamaica Gasoline Retailers Association, Gregory Chong, spoke with TVJ News last night. We are concerned. Uh, we are hoping that it will trend back down. We do understand that there was just a hurricane in the Gulf, and these things does affect the oil price, hence affects the extra refinery price to us. So we're watching it, and we're hoping that it will trend down very shortly. Chief Regulator Officer at the Jamaica Stock Exchange, Andre Tullo, says the perception that only the rich can benefit from the stock market is not true. He says companies can benefit from the a boost... stock exchange is open for all, right? And um, it's one that... The, this is a message that the stock exchange um, has been working to push to the um, investing community. That it's not just for the big man, it's for everyone. He says companies can benefit from a boost in available capital by going public. 
However, when the initial public offering closes, if they fail to raise the minimum agreed amount, they can... And that is usually laid out clearly in the prospectus, which is a legal document, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that is there to say that if this is not raised, we won't proceed with um, listing. And as such, now there are certain mechanisms that will kick in, which speaks to the refund of um, checks um, and uh, um, the, basically the refunding of the, of the, of the uh, monies that would have been received during the IPO. Right. He was a guest on the latest episode of The Exchange, a financial gleaner and JNN business forum aired on Wednesday. Outgoing governor at the Bank of Jamaica, Brian Winter, says one of the greatest challenges for his successor will be navigating the environment of an underdeveloped labor force. He says this problem will worsen as the economy continues to improve. Just as things are getting better, the challenge for the bank, I think, for my successor is going to be and give him, cut him some slack, or cut him some slacks, as a friend of mine said, um, it's going to be how do you build um, a high quality staff in that environment? And, you know, we're already seeing skills, challenges for skilled, skilled workers um, to be able to recruit them or to keep them. It's a difficulty probably everywhere. That's only going to get harder and worse as the economy gets better. At the same time, Mr. Winter says although high economic growth has been elusive, the level of economic activity in the island is unprecedented and is poised to get better. There's a change happening to Jamaica, an economic change, that is enormous. It's, it, the scale of it, I believe, is not truly appreciated by, 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 by us. We think we know, oh, things are going to be twice, there's going to be twice as many buildings put up or something like that, or three times. You think you know, and then it's another order of magnitude you have to think about, okay? The financial burden that plagued the Belfield Primary and Infant School in Manchester due to the lack of water is expected to ease at the start of the new academic year. This as a 30,000 gallon water tank will be constructed on the school's compound. Speaking at the ground baking ceremony recently, principal of the school, Brenda Hayes Anderson, expressed her gratitude for the project. This tank is to be built to have an approximate catchment of 30,000 gallons of water. This indeed will go a very far way as we have a population of close to 600. This will certainly put a dent in the fact that we have been spending close to $200,000 every month to purchase water. Councillor for the Belfield Division, Mario Mitchell, who was a part of the groundbreaking ceremony, told our news team about his plans for water in the area. We just recently opened our short-term facility, the Belfield Water Shop, and now this is, this is a, a significance. We have a population of almost 600 students here at the Belfield Primary School, and I've always advocated that the community itself and the partners involved, the church, the community, the schools, and this is a testament to that cooperation and partnership. Mr. Mitchell is also calling on the government to improve the water supply in the parish. I'm asking the facilities or the persons to be that the government use force acquisition to accept that there's millions of gallons of storage of water at the Kurt Van Windalco plant, which is not being used. The plant has been closed for 10 years, and I'm asking that that facility be used to garner water and be distributed to people across the parish, not just the Belfield Division, but for the entire parish. In sports, Jamaica's Sunshine Girls will play off for fifth place at the Netball World Cup on Sunday following a comfortable 77-47 win over Zimbabwe today at the Liverpool Arena. Jamaica, who needed to win to avoid a 7th-8th place playoff, led 23-15 after the first quarter, then took full control to the end of the first half, leading 47-24. The Sunshine Girls were outscored 14-12 in the third quarter, but still led 59-38 and then closed out the match with 18 more goals to come away with victory. Romelda Aiken scored 27 goals from her 34 attempts. Shanice Beckford netted 18 from 21, while Captain Janelle Fowler and Rebecca Robinson had 16 goals each. Jamaica's opponent in the 5th or 6th place playoff will be determined after the match between Malawi and Uganda, which is currently underway.
And that's Midday News. I'm Milton Walker. Join us at 7 for Primetime News on behalf of the news, sports and production team. Good afternoon.